at this log, it's like the greatest accomplishment of my life. This is a long time friend and customer's truck. It's been here before we made a video on it and in typical Silverado fashion, it just kind of had uh, every problem that there is. So theoretically, everything should be fixed now. Where this one's a little bit time sensitive as he's kind of already like lined some races up even though this isn't finished yet. And we're getting a late start today because the oil feed line broke on the way here this morning. So the turbo blanket got soaked in oil. So this thing's gonna smoke like a freight train the whole day, I'm pretty sure. So basically this is a Gen 3 motor with Gen 4 rods and pistons, snake eater injectors. I think they're 1500s if I remember right. I set all that stuff up quite a while ago. Built 4L60E, it's a 5.3 and it is a 80, is it an 80 millimeter turbo? I'll have to double check on that. Hey, what's up? What turbo you have on this? It's the uh, 80 millimeter. 80 mil, so I was wrecked. All right, hey, let me call you back, I have diarrhea. Okay, cool. Uh, what the hell? So last time I did 99% of the pump gas stuff. So I'm just going to kind of touch up a couple of things on pump gas, drain the fuel out, throw some ethanol in it, and then we will start probably filming a little bit more of this. He actually wants to do a before and after run with and without uh, the TurboGuard uh, air filter thingamajig. And he does want to push this thing pretty hard and he understands that it could explode, so. Let's get started. So just pulled the file out of this and this thing was probably, I probably tuned this six, eight months ago, something like that. So he's driven around quite a bit and this is the current learn table. Considering we've changed seasons and everything else, that's not so bad. This thing is being a real jerk so far. It makes awesome power, it runs great, but I have three fuel tables now uh, in order to get everything to look the way that I like. And the boost controller quit working again, which is one of the problems last time. So I've bypassed the solenoids. I'm going directly from the bottle to the gates and then using the dome pressure sensor to manually set the target using the regulator on the bottle. And I keep thinking it's going to be like one more run and I'm good on the pump gas, but uh, it's not working out that way. So hopefully this will be the last one. a little too good now just made 624 which would be cool but this is 93 octane I don't want it to make that much which is weird because it's targeting the same dome pressure that it was targeting uh, when the boost control was hooked up so let's see what the hell happened this actually isn't that bad at all that was only 12 pounds of boost this thing wants to make power and we're about three percent off on our fueling which we are going to roll with that because this thing is being stubborn as all hell so to even get this down that close is uh, a miracle in itself. Hey, I can show you how to be the boss. What's a little bit interesting is this is literally fixed bottle pressure from a regulator, no boost control, no PID, nothing. And if you look at the boost, you can watch that it ramps up and then it peaks here and then it kind of like falls with RPM. And this, whoops, this like spike up sort of ramp here where the, the motor and the converter kind of grabbing and the dyno's doing its thing and everything else. People chase this for years and uh, like I said this is with no boost control and it still did that. So you can try all you want to fix mechanical problems with boost control but there's an element of it that uh, it just kind of is what it is. So that's a little bit interesting to see. So I'm going to go ahead and drain the pump gas out. Um, this is more power than I want it to make on pump gas but considering we're not even using the boost control uh, we'll just target a lower value. Uh, I actually had this set at 9 pounds at the start of the run and it went up to like 13. So I don't know if there's like a leak in a fitting or diaphragm and it's actually getting some boost pressure on top of the dome pressure. But we'll keep that in mind for the, uh, whatchamacallit, the ethanol. Uh, but uh, with 9 pounds of dome pressure it's making like 550 which is about what I want it to do. So uh, let's drain this stupid fuel out and put the other fuel in it. Here's our current pump gas numbers. I don't recommend going that high with these things. 
if you want them to live. Especially being stock motor and all. And here's our fuel drain, bucket, whatever. And he brought lines and fitting, so we're just going off of the feed where the flex fuel sensor is. So where he told me the feed was, and what he brought the correct fittings for is not uh, the feed, or at least like the wrong side of it. So I uh, turned the key on and shot 9,000 gallons of fuel all over the ground. I don't want any more bullshit any time during the day from anyone. That includes me. So now we got to deal with that. So let me go see if I have the correct fittings and hose to make this work. Was that a pain in the ass? I'd never done it. No, well, you told me the wrong side of it, and the fitting that you had was for the wrong side of it. So I turned the pump on, and just like 4,000 gallons of fuel dumped all over everything. <laughs> oh, fuck. Wait a second. There are eight. <laughs> so you can see this is a male fitting, kind of like designed to go in a hose. So we need a female fitting to go into that thing, and you can see I had to use... $4,300 worth of adapters to make something work, but it's working now, and there wasn't much gas in it. It's already starting to get pretty unhappy. All right, the pump gas is out, which was a total disaster, and it was basically a gigantic waste of time because there was only about two gallons of fuel in the tank. Another uh, perfect example how trying to do the right thing bites you in the ass. Put in work. But anyways, we put 10 gallons of ethanol in it. I'm sure there's still some residual uh, fuel in the tank that you know wasn't drained out from the feed line. And uh, Lord only knows what the ethanol percentage was on the fuel when they got it. And the last time that this car was here, the flex fuel sensor was not working. Uh, so far on pump gas, it looks like it is working. So we're gonna hope and pray that that's working. I think I'll start off uh, just doing a fuel multiplier for making up for the additional fuel needed for the ethanol and I'll probably put two degrees in it. Uh, probably make a run or two like that and uh, get everything kind of blended up and working good. And then we'll try and pull that uh, air filter thing off. Hopefully we can just keep turning it up without having to like gap the plugs down or something irritating like that. Instantly I regret saying that. All these trucks always seem to be a pain when you gotta get the plugs out of them. And with that being said, uh, once we start cranking it up a little bit, I will spot check some plugs and make sure that uh, we're not about to blow ourselves up. All right, so the ethanol was pretty good. We got 82%. It uh, looks like it's reading nice and solid. It's not going crazy. Offset table's working, fueling's good. So this is two degrees of timing and the boost control junk is untouched. Hopefully it'll make the same amount of boost as it did last time. more often than not but our ethanol adder is not going to be linear so what I put in it was real good for cruising but then uh, it's a huge piece of shit full throttle so let's I'm gonna turn my 1d table into a 2d table and try it again so like a dumbass I made all of my changes and forgot to record the run which is unfortunate uh, if you look at this log it's like the greatest accomplishment of my life Check out our closed loop comp here. That's about as close as it can get. And between all 28 of my fuel tables, I'm pretty happy with the way that that's turned out. Flex fuel, we're at 82%. And uh, our dome pressure is the same. Where the hell is Boost at? Who stole it? Here it is. So Boost is exactly the same. And it made uh, 6.99. And so 6.99 it's what, 12 pounds of Boost? That That's awesome for this. Pretty good looking graph. If you watched the last video, one of the runs, it over boosted like crazy. And that's what this one is. So this one's no changes at all other than taking off the turbo guard thing. Those two runs overlay each other exactly, no variation at all whatsoever. So the turbo guard thing apparently is a myth. We'll show the graph real quick. Hold on. So the couple difference in horsepower, as you can see here, is I just didn't rev it quite as high. But otherwise, those you can't even see the 
previous run. Here they are again. The blue is with the turbo guard off, the red is with it on. So technically it actually made less power with the turbo guard off, but that's just the difference in variation, run to run temperature, that type of stuff. I wouldn't put any thought into that. You guys seen that new clear view catch can? All right, this time, since the boost is so low, I know I got some room to make power with timing, but instead we're just gonna turn the boost up a little bit. Uh, I did my best I could using a 3000 PSI regular or whatever to go up like five pounds of dome pressure. So let's see what happens. so it jumped up more than I was uh, kind of expecting curious to see what the boost is uh, it also sounded like I had a little miss to it so it might need to gap the plugs uh, actually didn't rev it very high either all right, let's check this all out see what we got to do so I'm not going to make any fueling changes as the fueling looks relatively close and then I mean you can see the misfires in the air fuel so it'd be pretty stupid to chase that uh, I think I'm going to cool it off and throw a set of plugs in it and gap them down. And, uh, oh, it was only 19 pounds of boost. Battery died. I don't remember what I was saying. So, uh, in typical Silverado fashion, putting plugs in this is probably going to take, like, hours. And I just don't have that kind of time. I know that we're good on the tune-up. So, I'm going to let it cool off and uh, probably try one more run. I'll speed the dyno run up a little bit, see if we can't pull through it and they can just put plugs in this themselves there's no reason for them to pay me to do that but i am going to pull a couple of plugs and make sure everything looks good but super happy that this is making so much power at such a low boost that's the secret recipe in my opinion to uh, making big power on the stock bottom end stuff the way my luck works is the boost is going to go higher than we want which is going to cause it to misfire worse and it's just going to be a huge waste of time let's give it a shot do it I guess 832 maybe had a tiny little miss but not very much I definitely confident that the plugs will clean that up so we'll finish this one up at the racetrack so boost was 20.7 psi and dome pressure was 21 psi so almost identical there and we basically have like a 1% correction. There's a 4 and a 3 right where you can blatantly see it miss. So this one didn't mess nearly as bad as the previous one. So there's just like one little miss in there. So we'll tighten some plugs up. Really happy with how this one turned out.